hope you're enjoying these videos because I really am having a lot of fun making them. And I'm being selfish because all of this research is going to be at my fingertips when I do get to Florence because I'm going to put all of these trips in an Excel spreadsheet that kind of breaks down if it's a short train ride or a long train ride, if it's uh, logistics or such that maybe just getting a driver might be worth it. Um, so let me show you what I'm thinking about for uh, having all of this at my fingertips on my iPad. I know I had done a ton of videos and I highlighted how to get to a ton of different cities, but then I realized, my gosh, I'm only going to be there for 30 days, so I'm going to have to really be selective on which ones I want to go to. So I did this spreadsheet that I can sort by time travel or which ones are direct, which ones uh, take longer, which ones uh, might need a driver. And so I'll have that at my fingertips and be able to make a quick decision first thing in the morning or, you know, the night before so I can do some logistics about how to get to the train station at what time, that kind of thing. And that will, uh, I guess, reduce the amount of stress I have and uh, make for a, a fun trip because I know I've already researched many of these cities. So as you can see here, I've um, sorted it by whether or not it's a train or a train and a bus combination or uh, later on I'll do some stuff that's only by bus when I get like inside and research things to get to inside Florence. Um, and then for um, the notes, sometimes the um, train station is in a different word like Padua is what we call it, but the actual train station is called Padova or Pado Padova. So there's little things like that that um, I highlighted so that I can think about things when I want to get around and traveling first thing in the morning. So that gives you an idea of how I'm going to try to stay organized so that I can spend less time figuring out where I want to go the next day when I'm there in Florence and have something at my fingertips. So I have a little bit more time on this video. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight uh, a few more towns, one of which is Cortona, which is another one of those small hilltop towns that's very, very close to Florence. Um, and it's got some uh, very unique Etruscan and Roman uh, ruins and uh, it's apparently a very, very um, quaint little hilltop town. The other one is Rimini, which is on the east coast, uh, a beach town actually. Um, so uh, I'm going to check out, see how long it takes to get there and uh, what there might be to do in November um, in a beach town. So enjoy. Cortona has to be one of the smallest hilltop towns that I've done research on so far. It's about 90 miles south of Florence. And to get there, I'd be taking a regional train that makes a handful of stops before it gets to the lower part of the town below Cortona. Cortona is a hilltop town, and from the train station, there are buses that take about 10 minutes and go on a winding road all the way up to the center of town. Cortona was such an important Etruscan center that the existence of some of its ancient settlements are still visible around the city today. It's got two kilometers of walls that date back all the way to the 5th century, and the museum has some of the finest artifacts in the country. The village is very quaint and photogenic due to its medieval architecture, which consists of ancient palazzos and narrow cobblestone streets and small artisan shops. And don't forget about the little Tuscan trotterias that I'm going to be enjoying for lunch. In the historical center of the town, there's a beautiful cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, which was built in 1456 and apparently is a must-see. Boy, I know I've said this before, but this is definitely on the top of my list. I love the cozy and quaintness of this little hilltop town, as well as all the um, Etruscan ruins and the Roman ruins. Those are the kind of things that I really enjoy looking for. So anyway, this is definitely on the list of places that I want to stop, explore, shop, and have lunch. Rimini is on the east coast of Italy, and to get there is a quick 38-minute fast train from Florence to Bologna, and then a 1-hour and 20-minute regional train that makes about 7 stops and arrives in Rimini. The whole ride will take me a little over two and a half hours. Looks like the train station is really close to the walking area and the shopping area of the center of town. During the summer, Rimini is known as a beachside resort with a huge nightclub scene. The waters of the Adriatic here are shallow and very warm. But with me getting there in November, I should probably have the place to myself. 
As with many cities in Italy, Rimini can date its history all the way back to the Etruscan and Roman times. The main church was built in the 14th century and there are ruins of a Roman amphitheater in the area as well. The bridge over the river there uh, dates its construction all the way back to the reign of Augustus in 20 AD. And the Arch of Augustus was originally part of the walls that went around the city, which were built in 27 AD. Many of the piazzas in the city are dotted with restaurants for the summer crowd. It looks like an ideal place to stop, explore, do some shopping, and have lunch. So I think you can probably sense the trend that I'm going for here. I want to see these historic, quaint um, hilltop towns that are inaccessible to the big bus tours. I feel like I have the place to myself. I can take my time, wander around. Little cities like Cortona um, and Multipucciano, walkable. They'll have some tourists, but not the big bus tours and things like that. I want to get out of Florence as much as I can. Florence obviously is one of the bigger uh, touristy destinations of all of uh, Italy, but it's a great place to have my hub to start off to do my traveling. But that's what I want to do every day, get out, find a small little quaint town and explore, feel like I have the place to myself and then get back to Florence in time to relax, have a quiet, safe dinner and get back to my hotel to start the whole thing over again the next day.